Hey guys, welcome back to another whiteboard chat. And today we are going to talk about the detoxification process. Most of you are familiar with this, or some of you might be familiar with this, especially when we talk about things like estrogen dominance, uh, digestion. I wanna go through just some of the basic points of the process, kind of overview of the process, some important things kind of relate them over to stuff that we generally talk about. Uh, we're talking about functional medicine. Process is very complex and it's long. There's a lot of steps. I just want to hit on a lot of the main points. Three main phases in this process. Most of you are familiar with this. If you've ever seen a Dutch test, you can kind of see some of the different phases, especially when we're talking about estrogen metabolism or estrogen detoxification and the pathways. Now, most detoxification is occurring in the liver and the gut. It is occurring in other areas, but depends on which part of the process we're in and kind of what we're talking about, because we have breakdown of toxins and breakdown of certain molecules. And we also have excretion of certain molecules, which of course is gonna, that's where you know the gut and bowels and urine and all that's coming into play. So if we look here, we have phase one. Um, a lot of what we're doing in phase one is we're breaking things down into more easily excretable compounds or, or substances, okay? So a lot of the fat soluble uh, molecules are gonna be trying, they're trying to be broken down into a more water soluble molecule so it can be excreted. There are several parts to this process. Well, I'm gonna show you the reactions that go, you know, the main reactions in each phase. So in this phase, we're looking at oxidation, which a lot of people are, have heard me talk about or are familiar with. We're looking at reduction, hydrolysis, hydration, and dehydration. A couple other things in this process. This process deals heavily with CYPs. So if anyone's heard of drugs being metabolized by these CYPs, there's a whole bunch of them. CYP activity can be genetic. Um, can be influenced by different uh, lifestyle habits, influenced by different foods even potentially, like you know, some of you may know how grapefruit will influence this. We also have enzymes and cofactors that are required for these, um, for these steps as well. So here we have some enzymes and cofactors are B2, B3, B6, folic acid, B12, which we know, especially these B vitamins, especially in specific forms are required for methylation and overall detoxification anyhow. Glutathione, branch chain amino acids, flavonoids, and phospholipids. So once we, we get into this, we have our toxins, we have our, you know, whatever we're trying to break down, or we're trying to get rid of, uh, it can be other things, it can be hormones and things as well. We wanna break them down, we wanna get them more easily into a more easily broken down state. We move over to Phase two. So phase two is dealing with a more water soluble type of uh, substance. Okay. And there are reactions in phase two as well. Um, phase two is also dealing heavily with reactive oxygen species. So this is like our intermediates, I should say. So we're dealing with free water or free water, free radical damage. And you'll see my arrows here. So with this, Really what we have to do is we have to balance free radicals with antioxidant intake. If you don't have a huge consumption or, or activities that promote a lot of free radicals, then of course it's easier to balance. And of course, if you have a good diet or a diet that is, uh, that is maybe more diverse in micronutrients, this can be a little bit easier. Some of the antioxidants we're dealing with here, you know, common, common stuff, right? Vitamins A, C, E, selenium, copper, zinc, which of course these are minerals manganese, CoQ10, you know, and we're also dealing with the thiols, which are a, that's a, uh, a suffix, right? Garlic, onions, cruciferous veggies, we can contain these things, bioflavonoids. I mean, there's, and you know, so you guys can see all this here. So again, we are, we're in this phase, we're trying to prevent this tissue damage, we're, we're dealing with this free radicals. Now we have processes going on in this phase or our reactions, I should say, glucuronidation, sulfation, glutathione conjugation, acetylation, amino acid conjugation, and methylation. You're probably familiar with some of these, maybe some of them not so much. Um, I'm not gonna go through and, and go through the whole process of each one of them. That would be like separate videos, I suppose. Um, but some of the things to keep in mind here, especially because we're dealing with a lot of hormones. Uh, many of you know that beta-glucuronidase is 
responsible for a lot of this estrogen recirculation that we see in um, estrogen dominance. And this is actually produced by gut bacteria. So really what's happening is this beta-glucuronidase is actually kind of reversing some of the activity from this process. And it's essentially um, returning these toxins back into the, our, their toxic form, right? Or their other, their previous form and they're being recirculated. So they're not being broken down, they're not being excreted. Nasty stuff. A lot of the research is actually correlates high beta-glucuronidase with certain cancers. You can imagine it's probably correlated with, you know, breast cancer. And we know some of that too is based on the detoxification pathways and just kind of how that estrogen is acting and metabolizing, um, not necessarily just like the total serum level of the estrogen, but kind of what it's doing and what form it's in in the body. Again, that's kind of phase two. You know, we're looking at preventing this tissue damage. We're trying to balance free radicals and antioxidant activity, breaking down the molecules a little bit more. Um, we're going through all these processes uh, here, clear down to methylation, which we know is very important in detox. Um, we're also seeing neurotransmitter metabolism and, and things of that nature. So we move into phase three. Uh, phase three is excretory derivatives. So this is where you're getting rid of stuff, right? At this point, everything should pretty much be broken down and ready to go. Um, we're gonna have excretion through both the, uh, both the stools and both the urine. So this is why we use certain testing methods with you know, stool and urine tests to see certain things. So for example, like our GI map will show us, you know, microbiome or, or gut flora. It also shows other things that are excreted in the stool. Beta-glucuronidase is on that test. Pathogens and viruses and uh, parasites and you know, all that stuff, right? Whereas our serum, or I'm sorry, our urine, we're looking at more hormones, adrenal metabolites, neurotransmitter uh, metabolites, you know, oxidative damage, all those things, right? So. There are definitely, liver's not the only organ involved here, obviously, and there are other organs involved, especially in the excretion process. I mean, the gut is involved, the excretion process is involving uh, the intestines of that, you know, bowels, kidneys, so on and so forth. Kind of to recap, we have our three main phases here. Each phase has some cofactors, you know, nutrients, enzymes, things that are required. Each phase is kind of just trying to further break down these um, these compounds and toxins into more uh, more easily excretable forms. So especially your fat solubles into more water soluble. We're balancing this free radical and free radical and antioxidant equation. We're also trying to balance you know hormone metabolism and kind of detoxification this process, not just toxins, right? And we make it all the way down and we excrete things. I know detox is a really uh, is a word that kind of gets laughed at people are like well that's what your liver's for and that's true right but the problem is you know we have a lot of people that are missing cofactors or they have other things like gut issues you know and then on top of those things they have high toxic loads so i mean they have a lot of things that need to go out but they also have a process that is not working in unison so you can imagine that things just sit there they're causing toxicity um, and you can have some real, you know, you can have some real problems that way. It's not just a matter of, oh, just let your liver do everything. That's not exactly how it works, especially in the folks that, you know, we're dealing with here uh, that are having all these types of problems. That is an overview of the phases. You could, of course, go online and look up the difference, you know, conjugation and things like that if you really want it. I don't know that that's entirely necessary for the things that we're trying to accomplish, but, you know, it's good to at least... Have a, have a basic understanding of how these processes work so we can kind of identify, you know, what's going wrong and what we might be missing. So hope that helps. Talk to you guys next time.